That's all I need. That's all I fucking need, man. I know y'all got a lot of shit to talk. I know. Got a lot of shit to say. I know what's going on. My ears to the streets. I heard the rumors. The doubters. The naysayers. No guns. No guns. On probation. No guns. When I hear say that, I'd be like, well, why are they not here? All right, man, let's cut that off. What's up, motherfuckers? What's up, bitch-ass niggas? Overrolling the biggest thing rolling, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. Come on, man. Detroit Sound, Don Life O. You know what you're saying. You know how we doing this thing, man. PSL. You see what's in the back. You know what I'm saying? The podcast is back. God's favorite. Yes. We're back in full effect, okay? You know what I'm saying, son? I feel like a New York nigga right now. You know what I'm saying, son? No nah, man, seriously, we came back. Um, the podcast is kind of what do you call it? Uh, took a hiatus, right? Of course. Yeah, took a hiatus. Took a hiatus. A hiatus. Hiatus. Come on, man. I'm gonna be able to talk this podcast episode. I know usually I don't talk well at all on camera, but who cares? <laughs> who gives a fuck? That's me. That's what comes with it. All right? It is what it is. God's favorite podcast, man. Episode 8. We back. All right? I know what y'all want to know, man. I know what I know the questions. I get it. Okay? I get it. Why so long? Why why, why, why the leave of absence? What's going on? Woot, 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 woot. I know. I get it. I understand completely. Okay? Shit happens. All right? Shit fucking happens. This is the most unorthodox, unprofessional um, um, workspace, probably in the history of workspaces. So this is how we get down. You know what I'm saying? We try things, try certain things out, certain things don't work. We go back to the original plan. We go back to the original idea. We start over. Whatever. We bump our heads. Fuck it. We fall. We fail. We start over again. It's what happens. Okay. Even the ash is back. You got to see how I'm playing it, man. I'm not really, you know, it's what it is, man. It's just part of it. This is Memorial Day weekend. It's a great time to kick it back off. Y'all have been on my head in my DMs. My friends have been in my text messages. Hey man, let's go, let's go kick, let's go kick this shit off. Ooh, do it again, man. Ooh, it's the time. I feel it. Never knew so many people wanted my opinion on things, you know? And we're here. You know, the long break, man. Actually, you know, shout out to my nigga Juan. You know what I'm saying? He really is becoming like a mentor to a nigga, man. I'm just, you know what I'm saying, paying attention and studying his ways and, you know, just learning a lot about the brother. And, um, hey, man, it's what it is. You know, we, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get these programs right. It's the first time this has been running for a minute. Everything is right now. Okay, boom, there we go. So, look, Facebook Live, welcome, man. This is Guys for the Podcast, you know. I uh, had to upload y'all. Make sure y'all was still in tune. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can stay a brisk and everything. Yeah, I learned a few words when I was on vacation. I just took a vacation. That's all it was. You know, it's just a vacation. Yes. Okay. Let me let, let me address let me address the the big you know the big question. Yes, I was with uh, Street Lord Radio. My nigga Juan. We recorded we recorded an episode. I think two episodes. One or two episodes. Um, I built a cast around me. Um, it was just too big for me to handle right now, man. I just got too much thing, too many things going on. Uh, and we had some creative differences too. He wanted, he, he thought that the show should be a certain way. I disagreed, but that wasn't really the main thing. It was mainly, it was just like, Hey man, it was just too it, organizing people's schedules. I had a dog ass cast though. I ain't gonna lie. I had some pretty good people in the city that were going to participate and, um, had some, I know, I know them personally and they have some very interesting uh, what do you call it? Uh, opinions on things. So, you know, yeah, you know, it was going to be a good conversation. Half the cast didn't even show the fuck up. You see? You see? You see how they do me? My dog showed up, but half the cast didn't even show up. So I said, oh, fuck this shit, man. Go back to the original drawing board. What I like to do most. You know me, I don't know if y'all know me like that, but you know, you're going to get to know me. I don't really fuck with a lot of niggas. I fuck with niggas. I got love for niggas all day. But because of expectation, heartbreak, anger, 
uh, what's another word I'm looking for? Uh, responsibilities. I'd rather just do things by myself. I know for sure I'm never going to let me down. I'm going to always be responsible and come through. Give me the motherfucking ball when the clutch when it's, when it's time for the clutch shot. Because that bitch going in when I lose. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you know. I fell back from Shooter Radio. They are still doing things over there at Shooter Radio. They have some pretty uh, fire, interesting uh, content about to come out and release. I am putting some music out over there. Me and Shooter Wine do have a little something special coming for people, too. Shout my nigga Wine. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's on the flow, man. What's up? PSL, man. What's up? What's up? PSL, bitch. I know what time it is. Okay. <sighs> Biggest thing about this uh, hiatus is that I missed a lot of fucking shit, man. It's been a lot of things, even in the city. I mean, you know, we all, you know, now listen, now listen, I want y'all to take this with a grain of salt, okay? This is my brother. This is my brother, okay? So it doesn't do me any justice to admit this, but I know this nigga. This is one of my brothers, man. I know this guy. We all seen Detroit, the smack heard across the fucking world, across the globe, Okay? The smack sock? I don't know. I think the nigga had a fucking brass. Look, I think the nigga had brass knuckles, brass, brass. I don't know. I think the nigga had something in his hand. You're not just going to smack my mans like that and he's just going to. Come on, bro. You know, That ain't going to happen. Come on. Kudos to the dog, though. You know, he needs to enter that fucking slap contest. That's the fuck he needs to do. You know what I'm saying? Because he might just be a really, really. I heard that ain't the first thing he's a slap dog. I heard that my brother ain't the first. You know, and when I say my brother, listen, I, I say, I, I joke about this because, listen. My brother was in the wrong. <laughs> he was drunk and in the wrong. It is what it is. He don't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. He, look, I'll tell you one thing. My nigga Chavis will pull up on you right now and smack the shit out of you too. Still. And still stay the same energy. So, you know, he a fighter, man. He don't give a fuck about shit like that. But, of course, the world, we don't get these jokes off. Because that shit was funny. That shit was funny. As long as my man was safe. Look, my man, I respect him. They didn't even stomp the nigga out. They didn't do none of that. That wasn't the point of the altercation. You know what I mean, they just wanted to let a nigga know, hey, man, let's chill out. And, you know, shit happens, man. We don't all been there before. I personally never got stopped to sleep, but, hey, fuck that shit, nigga. It can happen, you know? So, fuck it. It is what it is, man. Shout out to both of them is, man. I, I, I'm pretty sure they both made amends by now. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the character, like I said, behind those two other gentlemen, I don't know the brothers, but the character they, that, that they uh, exhibited that day, they some stand-up guys. They got to be. You know what I'm saying? They, they gotta be. That, that, that's that stand-up character. That, that's a character trait that you have right there when you do shit like that. Okay, boom. Let a nigga know something and you let it be what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's all it really is, bro. So, uh, yeah, I missed that shit. I missed all the basketball season. Shit, what else I missed, Facebook? Uh, uh, all the LeBron hate. You know, LeBron's not in the finals. Ah, boo-hoo. Shut up, nigga. LeBron said a man. As you niggas can see, you niggas aren't entertained. Are you entertained? You're not. You niggas aren't entertained. It is what it is. Okay? So now, now you niggas got to suffer and watch who the fuck else. Who's about to win the fucking final? The Heat? The Miami Heat? Okay. <laughs> Did, okay. I'm not even going to. No disrespect. Whatever. Get your Jimmy Butler, get yours, my nigga. Um, who's going to The Warriors? Like the no-brainer Warriors? They got, they finally got their shit together. They should have won the past 10 championships. So, I'm not surprised by you niggas. I'm not impressed by you niggas either. <laughs> you niggas don't impress me? Basketball season is still, it's garbage. Bring on football season. We're waiting, guys. Lions, I might actually invest in you guys this year, man. I don't know, man. Last year, you guys lost me my biggest check. <laughs> you know, I bet it, the, you know, you guys lost. Every fucking game into the one I bet it on, and you bitch ass niggas wanted to win. And I just said, here, mind you, I bet it against you, yes. But, you know, the point is, damn, nigga, what the fuck? Damn, nigga, shit, what the fuck? Whatever, man. All right. Me and Sad ain't tone. My motherfucking clone. <laughs> my light skinned clone. Me and Sad ain't tone. My light skinned clone. We back in the motherfucking booth and drop some music. My nigga Tom dropped the whole project. We're gonna get the new music later on. A lot of people, I done missed out on a lot of new music, but my nigga said ain't Tom, man. He dropped a new project. You know what I'm saying? Ben Platinum. I'm gonna give him his shout outs first. That's my motherfucking clone, nigga. Fuck you niggas talking about. You know what I'm saying? I just ain't got the body right now, you know? 
I, I, you know, I grew the hair back, you know? And I'm gonna talk about this hairline a little bit later. Actually, we're gonna talk about this hairline a little bit later. Give me, give me, we're gonna get to it because, you know, I got some barber issues we've been going through. They, they, they still here. They still there. Still out of line. But no, nah, man, hey. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, me and San Antonio, man, we dropped some new music. Um, and Payroll's on there too. Shout out to my nigga Pay. Um, he dropped some new music too. He just got, we're gonna talk about that later though. Um, what else, what else, what else, guys? Ah, what up, guys? Dave, what's up, man? What's up, my boy? We getting this thing rolling again, man. I took a little hiatus. Had to, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, put, some, put my hands together like this. You know? And now we do. I got the lotion. Is on. It ain't on today, but the lotion's on. Metaphorically speaking, okay? <laughs> you know? This past, I don't know, man. This, you know, this whole vacation, man. It was like a, it was it was a good little journey, man. I think that everybody needs a break from things. I mean, I was only seven episodes in. Don't get it twisted. It wasn't like I was working my ass off, okay? <laughs> and I was just talking shit about niggas. I wasn't really, you know. I went to Chipotle the day. They're still filthy. Chipotle is still filthy and very disappointing, okay? Whatever, man. Fuck it. You know, this past vacation I took, man, it was uh, it was much needed, man. I got time to recollect my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Plan things out. As you see, I've been doing something special. For, for, for the over rolling fans, you know what I'm saying, that I do have still hanging on by the thread, sick of my bullshit, <laughs> sick of my hiatuses, you know. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. They say over's not consistent. How? I've been dropping projects for the past eight years straight. I've taken one year off, 2017. Now, I think I dropped the EP that year to even shut y'all the fuck up. So, yeah, it might have been 2016. No, I dropped the EP that year for Dex. 2017, me and Evan Twer got uh, dropped uh, Don't Have Sex With Rappers. And then I dropped Dragon's Revenge in 2017. Or maybe that was early 2018. Then I dropped that big boy, Northland. Y'all know what time it was that. When that came back, it was like, yeah. So, I mean, there, there yeah, there's been no over hiatus. But I get it. You know, you guys want more. And I got to give you more, man. I got to give you more, man. You know? Got to give you more. What else, man? What else we got going on? Yeah, man, just a spiritual weight loss journey. I've been I've been working out. You know, so y'all can't really tell. I was fatter than this. I blew up, man, on vacation. I had to get back to my regular size before I got back on camera. It was in before I would have been on camera like these. Well, you see, I, you you can see the background and shit now. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Before you knew, can you can you, can you, can you even see the background? Now you know what I'm saying. We got some space. I got some time. I got some space. You know what I'm saying? To think better, to be better. You know what I'm saying? What's good, Alicia? What's going on, man? Ah, man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love, man. Much love. Hey, I need the love. I need all the love I can get right now. I need it all. You know, I need it all, man. Ooh. Woo! I need it all, man. I need it all, man. Lacking in love. I need to put out. I'm talking lacking in love. You know, whatever. Don't fuck that shit. So what else been happening with me, man? I lost my dog. Tragedy hit the Rollins. Tragedy hit the Rollins family. You know. My, my 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 motherfucking spotted black and white pit bull terrier. I lost him, man. He passed. He passed a couple weeks ago. Uh, affected my parents more than it did me. You know, that was my dog, though. I was dealing like my you know my little brother, like my damn he dealing like a son of me. I brought him home. I don't want to bring him home. I picked him up and brought him home. I called him Lucky because I got him from a crack house. Being honest with you. <laughs> I got it from a dog fighting crackhead, a dog fighting spot. <laughs> you know, and I said, you're lucky because you about to be this bitch fighting all these tainted ass, fucked up ass dogs for money. And they was gonna, one of them was going to kill you, you was going to kill somebody. So bring your lucky ass over here. And I called him lucky. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to my nigga BJ. I got him off Linwood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, this is a true story. <laughs> no, ki no kizzy. You know, and um, yeah, man, he been down for, he been down with the gang. With the rolling game for fucking 13 years? Yeah, you know? We had to put him down. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little bit of my family business, man. And this is how I know. <sighs> we just all live very unique lives. All of us, okay? All of us. We live very unique lives, all of us, okay? My dog died. Doctor said, put him down now. Hurry up. Do it now. I'm looking at the dog like, hey, 
The dog is fine. I come home. I come home to y'all. I, I see the dog. The dog's wagging his tail. The dog's licking, my, licking on me. He wants pets. I'm touching him. I'm rubbing on him. Now, he got a few, like, bumps and lumps on him, cancer lumps and shit. Yeah. But he not running into walls and shit, you know? But he is, his, 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 uh, uh, digestive system was, was failing him a lot. He wasn't getting any nutrients. He was shitting like a horse. Okay? <laughs> okay? It's what it is. It's what happened. Okay? He was shitting like a horse. He was just walking around just shitting. And it was liquid shit. It was then like shit piss. He was pissitin, pissitin. I don't know. I don't know. You, you figure it out, okay? But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Lost my dog, man. You know, um, they had to make the decision to put him down. And the biggest fight in the family was do we get him cremated or do we bury him? Nigga. Bury him or create. I, I don't know. I don't... Cremate him. Where the fuck we gonna bury him at? We about to have a funeral for a dog? Look, I love animals. Lucky was my little man. Come on, cuz. He would if he was a human being, he would have said, bro, would you burn me up? Like, what the fuck is y'all talking about, bro? But okay. My parents had a hard time deciding on what to do. They finally figured it out and said, uh, okay, we're going to bury him. I said cremate. Actually, let me, let me tell the story right. I said let's cremate him. My mom said let's cremate him. My daddy said, fuck that shit, nigga. You're going to bury him in the backyard, nigga. And you're going to come dig the hole right now. Now, I don't know what type of gangster shit, what type of movies my pops has been listening to, has been watching. All right? I don't understand. But I don't know what makes this nigga think that digging a hole for a body is the easiest shit in the world. We're going to get done with this in 30 minutes. This ain't a 30 minute job, nigga. <laughs> it's hot as hell outside. And you got me in the backyard digging a hole in a residential property. Nigga, it's trees, it's roots, it's pipes, it's all type of shit going on under that dirt. You think we got enough space and, 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 and length to fucking in depth? To fucking dig a hole for a body? <laughs> so that's when I knew, like, oh, yeah, this nigga out his shit. <laughs> He's grieving for real. But fuck it. I said fuck it. I I, I knew it was going to be a terrible idea. I said fuck it. It's going to help my mans, my pops, my, my, my right-hand mans, my pops. It's going to help them get, get over this tragedy. Come on, let's roll. I'll dig a hole with you, pop. Come on. We'll dig to, we'll dig to, to the death of both of us. Come on. Fuck it. We're in the backyard. Got the digging. 20 minutes. Half a foot. This nigga quits. I say, dog, you know, you can't really make this shit up. He quits on me. He says, yeah, man, you know, this ain't gonna work. I got it on tape. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I thought it was the funniest shit ever. He said, yeah, man, let's go ahead, man. Put him, let's go ahead and put him back in the, in the back of your truck, man. This is a... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just take him, take him down to the Humane Society in the morning. That's what we did, and they cremated him. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, man. Just funny times. You know, I'm learning that funerals, there are there, there really is, like, uh, funny and comedy and death. You know? A lot of comedians say that. And I used to be like, eh, eh. I can see it, though, now. I can see it, though, now, man. When you really recognize all the wild shit that goes on around you know what I'm saying? It is pretty funny. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, lost my dog. So RP Lucky, man. This should be the lucky episode, but we back. The lucky episode. How about that? We're gonna change it to that. You know what I'm saying? My mom's hurt, but you know, she she, she she's handling it too like a big dog. That was her road dog, man. And uh, hey. Now my kids are here. Yeah. Kids. Whew. My kids are here. You know what I'm saying? My son had his first birthday. You know, he's a wild boy. Brookie. She is uh, America's next top model. I just, you know, I'm just done with a household of talented people. Let's just say that. <laughs> but now that my talented kids are just able to, you know, come to the play, come to the view, and, uh, you know, give my mom, you know what I'm saying, some, some, some space to move on and appreciate more things. My pops, too. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, that's what it is, man. R.P. Lucky for my dog. You know, speak of this. Yeah, I keep taking this hat off because, you know, it's kind of hot. I ain't got the AC on right now because I'm trying to have everything quiet so y'all can hear what I'm talking about. I'm trying to be a little bit professional, right? Shout out to my dog. My dog's out here, man. I'm, re I'm repping the game, repping the set. Come on. Let me tell y'all niggas something about this barber cut. Y'all see this? You see this? I got a new barber. I got a new barber, guys. I fuck with him. I fuck with this barber. You know what I'm saying? I've been back and forth with barbers, you know, here and there, here and there, here and there. You know what I'm saying? My main, my, I ain't gonna lie, the last three to four barbers I had, they were legit. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that it was only one that I that I didn't rock with. But not he was he was cold, but he waxed me. And he way too far. He's like 40 minutes away from where the fuck I stay. It's like, bro, you should have said this in the first place. You know what I'm saying? You call. You cost a lot. You ask me a, a bunny. You know what I'm saying? A honey bun. You know what I'm saying? Icy white honey bun real quick. I said, all right, man. You know, you're a little bit, you're a little bit, you know, I'm not future. I'm not baby face Ray. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not peasy. I'm not these niggas. I'm old. I'm just a little old, over, man. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just doing mind my business. You know what I'm saying? Count my blessings, man. That's all I am. Give a humble man. Can I? Can I, I need to have a sign on the side of her. Can a humble man have a cut, please? But you know, I had three other barbers and stuff that besides him, four other barbers besides him. Um, the main, the main thing was time. Like, uh, I remember back in with me growing up, you have a barber. These niggas dropping for dime. Hey, man, I, I got. You got time today for a cut? Oh, yeah, come on through. You got time tomorrow for a cut? Oh, yeah, come on through. See me in the morning. That's simple. Nowadays, we got apps and shit. Everybody's scheduling shit. Like, like I'm getting my nails done or something. Like, goddamn, nigga, I ain't no motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? No female, man. Just tell me, can you cut my shit or not? You know what I'm saying? You know, I wish we still had that type of convenience, but we don't have that no more. It's a new age, new technology. Hey, barbers need, barbers need, you know what I'm saying? Things that are more convenient for them, too. So I understand that. But anyways, I got a new barber, okay? You know what I'm saying? A friend of my pops, he charges fair. You know what I'm saying? You guys can go see him. I don't know if he wants me to give out the address. I don't know if he wants to keep it exclusive right now. Whatever. I'll talk to him next week or whatever when I see him or a couple weeks when I see him, whatever. But yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. He tried something different, you know, without my without my doing. He tried to make it so that I have one of them pigeon heads. Like, you know, you you know them niggas. They got the pigeon heads. You know y'all niggas. With the pigeon head, uh, with the beak, with the motherfucking beak, um, on your head, on your foreline, on your hairline, yeah. He gave me one of them so I could fit in. I know what he was trying to do. He's an old school nigga. I know what he was trying to do. You know what I'm saying? He probably thought I gave a fuck that my shit was receding. Or ain't, my shit ain't receding. It's just faded a little bit. First off, you know, my shit's still there. You know what I'm saying? It's just that you know it shows up sometimes, and sometimes it don't. It's kind of like it's uh, it's like you know, like like uh, it's truant. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes it's tardy. Either way, the point is, nigga, it goes to the goddamn school. Okay, it's just not fucking always in attendance. It might be in the hallway. It might be you know in another class skipping. It might be in the back getting his dick sucked. But whatever. Okay. The hair. Anyways, he gave me the triangle peak. I don't know if you can see this shit, Facebook. He gave me the triangle peak. He gave me the beak. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he tried to fade the size. You know, he, I mean, you know, he did his, you know, the last cut he did was 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 the one. That's why I said, oh, I gotta go back to this thing. The last cut he did was the one. That bitch. I wish I'd have started the podcast then, cause then I'd have been on this motherfucker. It'd have been holes in the window. You know what I'm saying? Looking through the window, like, damn, you see that nigga cut? But today, you know, it's kind of empty. It's kind of dry today. You know, I still like it. It's clean. It's, you know what I'm saying? I can pull it off. You know, I can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. New barbers, man. You barbers are fucking, not you, my barber. My barber, you good. But you other barber, you barbers are fucking ridiculous, all right? Okay? Fucking ridiculous. Prices are still out of, out of line. Disrespectful. Um, time and availability. Availability, ability. What the fuck I'm saying? Time and availability, Okay? Hey, man, whatever, dog. New barbers. Can't live with them, can't live without them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. There's a lot of new things going on in, in, in today's culture. 
after this, after I call this post pandemic, the world post pandemic, man. Hoochie Daddy shorts. <laughs> you think I'm not gonna get on you niggas? Hoochie Daddy shorts. Hey man, I ain't gonna lie, man. The ladies love Hoochie Daddy shorts. You know, we got a homeboy in our group chat. It's my brother, man, Kelvin. Yeah, I'm going to put his name out there. Because I want y'all niggas to harass him as much as you can. Whenever the fuck this shit blows up. I want you niggas to harass Kelvin Brown as much as you fuck. I, I, I would like trolls who spend 24 hours a day harassing Kelvin Brown. Okay? Because he deserves it. He fucking deserves it. <laughs> but, all right. Hooch Daddy, man. Niggas, niggas hit the group chat like, yeah, I'm about to start this new thing called Hooch Daddy Shorts. He likes to wear these short shorts. He's a little boxer now. He does beats. He's a, he, he, he makes little beats and shit. He's a little, he's a little boxer. You know how Detroit niggas always put a lure in front of anything? He's a boxer. He's actually like what? He's like one and one or some shit. His record is terrible. But my point is, all right, Kelvin, this nigga Kelvin, <laughs> it's crazy because it's not, and it, I guess it does make sense. Like, you know, he likes to give pointers and tips and shit. And he has like predictions about uh, all these fights that's been going on and shit. We just had the Davis fight, Javante Davis fight. Ain't his name Javante or some shit like that? Javante or Giovante or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know, brother, man. You know, congratulations to your win. He knocked out another fucking foreigner. That's all you niggas is doing is beating up on fucking foreigners. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just, it's just, can we call a spade a spade? We get it. It sells tickets over there. Boxing is probably one of their most, boxing and soccer. They're two prize sports. The two money makers, okay? You probably got the cartel coming in on things. I know what time it is. Hey, man, clean the money. Get it right. Do your thing. I don't care. That's not my business, you know? But all you niggas doing is beating up on foreigners. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, if I, if I lost 200 pounds, I'd be the number one box in the world. Because I could take a hit. I could give a hit. No homo. Yeah, no homo. Pause. But also, I just don't got the endurance. I'm not lasting 12 rounds with you, brother. I mean, we can do we can do like a good little 20, 25 second piece up this first round. 25 seconds. And then we can, you know, but hey, I'm not I'm not doing the whole eight round, 12 round thing with you niggas. I'm not playing with you niggas. Eight rounds doing this shit. Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. I'm not doing all that. Okay? I'm a... Uh, hold on. <laughs> that's more. That's, <laughs> that's more. My, that's more my mentality. I don't know. Whatever, man. Oh, ignore that. It's scratch. I'm on probation. I'm actually not doing nothing. I'm doing this. Blessings, brother. Blessings. Blessings, brother. Blessings. <laughs> All fucking day. All right. <sighs> Whatever, man. My pop says I get on here and just talk shit. I need to say some informative shit. I need to do some more productive. He don't know shit, do he? I wish my listen. I would love to get on my daddy Instagram and all this other shit and have y'all harass him too. He deserves it too. Everybody, get it, get it, get it. Harass him. Go, go attack him. <laughs> but who's your daddy shorts? I got a homeboy. He's a boxer. Like I said, you know what I'm saying. Um, he wanted to start this brand of hoochie daddy shorts. Come to find out, he didn't make the word hoochie daddy up at all. Come to find out, the word's been around for years. Come to find out, there's a bunch of hoochie daddy fucking brands. Fucking copier. You know what I'm saying? He's nothing more, nothing less, nigga. But a fucking, uh, a fucking, uh, a shadow. I don't know what the fuck to call him. You niggas figure it out. Put it in the comments. Harass him. Kevin Brown. The fucking shadow. That's his boxing name for now on. Now coming to the, to the, to the ring. No, Kevin Brown from Cincinnati, Ohio, the shadow. Fucking Cincinnati, Ohio. Speaking of Cincinnati, Ohio, y'all niggas missed this this fucking uh this this past break. All right, that I had this past vacation I took. Got into it with some Cincinnati bitches. I got into it with some Cincinnati bitches. I don't what the fuck I can't even, I can't even talk right right now. I don't even know y'all. Why y'all getting mad at me? They created spaces. Twitter has this thing called spaces now. Basically like Clubhouse, but it's for Twitter. It's actually better if you ask me. But okay, whatever, cool. You know what I'm saying? Twitter comes with the spaces. I hop on. You know, my homeboy's from, oh, Kelvin's from Cincinnati. My bad, y'all. And he got some homeboys from Cincinnati that we all family now and everything's tied in, right? So I hop on and shit. I said, what y'all Cincinnati niggas be talking about down here? How you, what be making y'all laugh? What's y'all culture talking about? 
Of course, we talk about sex. All right, cool, cool. Big nerd, what's up, big nerd? You know what I'm saying? That's my dog. But she played me at first, so I gotta get on her ass. I gotta get on her ass. She played me at first. I didn't like it. I don't, I'm like, you know, I had to really check myself honestly because I was halfway in the wrong. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I was halfway in the wrong a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. You know. <laughs> But yeah, man, we, we, they, they started the spaces and they kicked me the fuck out. So here was the topic. It was it was a, it was a meme going around on Facebook and stuff, and I, I asked and said, "Hey, it said this this dude told his baby moms, right?" Which let me just I I I, I, I get it now. I have to state this shit for the record now because you niggas will judge me later, and then it'll be a whole shit show because I don't apologize for shit. So I get it. Yes, I do not believe I do not believe what this nigga said was true. Okay. I just said two and two. I don't know if y'all peeped that. Yes, I do not believe. <laughs> yeah, you peeped that, right? But there's some validity that he has, that he holds. And this is what I this is what I presented to him. You know, this is meme that goes around this dude, told his baby moms, yo, oh, this girl, this girl said, yo, my baby daddy said, this was a quote, quote. My baby daddy said that no one would ever love me and my three kids ever again. Boy, was he wrong. There's all type of niggas in my DMs. That's the end of the meme. Everybody laughed and, you know, applauded it and, you know, woo -doo -woo -doo and woo -doo, right? I just want to hear a live interaction of what these Cincinnati niggas thought about it. I don't know y'all. Y'all not from the y'all not from Detroit, so y'all probably got a whole different mentality or a whole different way of thinking than I do. I know we all black, but I mean, still. You know, big nerd. <laughs> that's how I call it. Big Nerd. <laughs> that's not her name. That's her name on Twitter. <laughs> Big Nerd. Sturdy Nerdy. Something like that. I can't remember. My bad. If I'm fucking up. I'll get it right next week. But uh yeah, Big Nerd, uh she entertained the spaces and she had a bunch of girls in there. Shout out to all the girls in there in Cincinnati. You know what I'm saying? I told them as soon as I came in, Kel, you know, Kelvin friends, you know, ghetto. So, you know, as soon as I came in, Kevin said, it's my nigga Obi from Detroit with the whoop. And I told him off top, I said, listen. I'm in this. I'm in the spaces right now, and I ain't trying to fuck none of y'all. Okay, I ain't trying to fuck nobody. So, y'all gonna get the honest, raw opinion that I have to say from a male perspective. But you, you may not like it. But I don't mean no disrespect. I'm always respectful. But you're gonna get my honesty. If my honesty offends you, it just offends you. I mean, you gotta, you gotta deal with that. But I don't mean no disrespect from it. You know what I'm saying? I gave him the, I gave him the pre warning about me and my. Thoughts and opinions. And then we went on a conversation. I said, hey, what do you think about this meme? That dude said, you know. He told his girl, Yo, you'll never fucking find a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Take care of you. Love you and the three kids like me. Fuck you. And she said he was wrong. Niggas on her DMs. They had all type of shit about their opinions. A lot of them, of course, in the spaces had kids. As Oh, no, 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 I'm a thought too. Relax. Relax. I'm not calling. I'm a thought too. But, you know, of course, there's a bunch of, you know, kid had motherfuckers in this bitch. Single kid having motherfuckers in this bitch on top of that. <laughs> and nigga, this nigga goes, the girls just got the going, like, and they got the going on me. Like, I said the shit. I said, hey, 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 you know, I said it was a meme. And, you know, they got the going on me about their opinions and shit. I don't know them just all that. That's their own personal business. But um, it was a dude in there. A dude popped up in there. You know, a brother from Cincinnati, but he lives in Atlanta. And he pops in there. He says, yeah, man, you know, whoop, 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 whoop. And he basically fucking shut and jived for these Cincinnati girls. And hey, hey, man, I just, I called it like I said. I said, hey, bro, I just asked him a question. I didn't even say shit. I said, hey, bro, were you raised, were you, were you raised by a woman? And he said, yeah, I was raised by a woman. Actually, he died. I was like, cool. All right. And he got talking more, talking more, talking more. Just, you know, just pandering to the girls. Letting them know, like, yeah, you know, because, I mean, let's be truthfully honest. Now, I will say this about what I'm going to say. That mean had some sort of validation. Like, nigga, the average single man, I mean, now today's climate is a little bit different. These younger niggas, they do things, they eat booty fast, they eat booty on first dates. You know what I'm saying? These younger niggas, these younger niggas fucking, um, yeah, man, they, they, they trick on girls. You know what I'm saying? They throw money at you, nigga. They, you know, you, girls really having their way right now. So don't get it twisted. I understand that. I don't mean to come with my old <laughs> plantation uh, views and values and shit. I'm, that, that ain't what this is. But what I said was, 
said, bro, will you raise my woman? He said, yeah, he's raised my woman. He kept going and going. And I'm just noticing, like, bro, he's sitting here, like, pattering to these girls. And one of the girls said something about how she had three or two kids or something like that. And she had two niggas trying to marry her. It just, unfortunately, didn't work out. So my only response was, well, if it didn't work out, motherfucker, then you ain't, ain't nobody chose you. Wasn't that the whole point of the fucking argument? If you had some niggas that wanted to marry you, that wanted to be with you, but they didn't be with your ass, then so far, the boyfriend's up too. You up zero, bitch. It's simple. What's wrong with you? Do you not know math? Do we not know math? Why would you get mad at me? Because I fucking stated the fucking obvious. <laughs> I didn't say that your boyfriend, I didn't say that the nigga was right. I do think he has some validity. I think that it depends on the, I'll say this one piece. Cause just to give me some, some y'all can give me a lawyer. Y'all can relax. I think it depends on the type of woman you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that the kids is what holds women back from a, from a real nigga stepping into their life trying to get them. I think it's the other things that, that that come with. Hey, man, maybe you're like this because you have three kids now. Maybe you're like this because you have two kids now. These are the things where it becomes challenging for the new nigga to come in and accept the baggage that was left from the last nigga. That's what I'm thinking he's trying to say. I don't know this ignorant nigga. It was a fucking meme. I, it can be fucking fake. Nigga, it can be made up by a fucking bot. Who fucking knows? Okay? I don't care about this shit. I love y'all. I love all women. I respect all women. Dude gets on there barking. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Baby, you can always find a nigga. No, man, women should never be talked to like that. Who, who? I'm like, man, this could be a fucking bot. What are you? Okay, I'm, so I asked him. I said, hey, bro, you really pandering to this nigga. So if you're not trying to fuck any of these girls, okay. I asked him, I said, are you bisexual? Boom. Entire motherfucking chat explodes. All the girls get on my ass, jump my ass. Why the fuck would you say that to that nigga? Nah, nah, nah. He get on my ass. Nigga, I ain't no motherfucking bisexual. Nigga, I said I had a wife. I said, do you know what bisexual means? <laughs> you said you had a wife. I said, are you bisexual? I didn't say, are you gay? And I was asking. I didn't even call you gay. I didn't even call you bisexual, my nigga. I asked you. I asked you. So, like, nigga, I can, I'm a big nigga that wears fucking fitted clothes like Peasy. Nigga, if a nigga walk up and say, yo, is Oba kind of, kind of, woo woo what's up with Oba? Is he kind of, he go both ways? Like, I, I, nigga, if that's what you think, you just fucking, I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm not taking dick from no nigga. I'm not giving dick to no niggas. I don't give a fuck what y'all niggas think. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, you know, that defense thing was just kind of like the second thing. It was the first thing he said was I had a wife. I said, nigga, I asked bisexual. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, that means women and men. Second thing, boom. You're very defensive right now. You're attacking me. And I just asked the question. I didn't even call you this shit. And you don't even realize that. Oh, yeah, there might be some gay trace there. So, those Cincinnati hoes kick me the fuck out of the space. <laughs> I was a disruption, you know, since the society in Cincinnati, which is interesting. Like, what my, my one question was Cincinnati's problem? <laughs> uh, Cincinnati, get focused, man. I get it. Hey, man, we just had a police chief up here, man, that uh, was the police chief. He's from Cincinnati, and uh, uh, the nigga is trying to run for mayor or governor. He's trying to run for governor, and they just kicked his ass off the, off the pole because this Cincinnati ass forged the fucking signatures of niggas talking about, yeah, you should run for governor. The fuck the part is, if he done run up on me and said something, I'd have said, hey, man, I'll sign that shit for you. Go ahead, man. Do your thing. He forged him. Oh, well, he's out the ballot. Cincinnati, there you go. Congratulations, nigga. Love you, Cincy. What the folks are talking about, man? I don't know, man. This past break, man, there's been a lot of things going on, man. Uh, my nigga, oh, my favorite comedian started the podcast, uh, Comedian CP. Um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube. I've been going down a lot of YouTube rabbit holes. Comedies and uh, stand-ups and interviews and shit like that. Uh, Fat Joe. Fat Joe's been going crazy with the interviews. I'm so happy for Fat Joe, man. I've always supported Fat Joe. I've always appreciated and admired him. I actually met Fat Joe one time. And uh, it was when I was with Dave, and me and Dave just walk in, and we did like something in Florida. It was we were flow rider. It was Fat Joe and Flow Rider sitting together. They did a foundation or something for the kids, like a like a like a basketball camp or something. And we came and showed up, and just just to show love. And um, 
you know, Dave Shea went up to him or whatever, but she didn't really speak to things like that. She ain't, I don't think she even knew, really recognized who was who at the time. Because, you know, Dave was so young. But I was like, oh, shit, that's that Joe. Joey Crack, oh, shit, you know. I'm a hip-hop nigga at heart and a gangsta at heart. So, you know what I'm saying? I heard about all his stories, and I know about his, you know, a few about a few of his trials and tribulations, and I was a huge Big Pun fan, and, you know, I was too nervous to say something to him. I just gave him a salute, like, what's up? The gangster salute, like, the, hey, Joey, you know, throw your hood up at a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Nigga was like, oh, for sure, my nigga. I was like, yeah, for sure, my nigga. You already know what's up. Detroit, nigga. We in this bitch, you know, what's up, my nigga? I can't be like that. <laughs> That's my only Fat Joe story. We and Fat Joe probably have a, could have a great relationship if I fucking opened up and sat down and kicked it with him and shit. I was too cool for school. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Watching a lot of interviews, man. Oh, I've been, oh, man. Let me tell y'all something I realized over this break. I humbly say this. BFB Pac-Man, the rapper. BFB Pac-Man. Me and that nigga might be related. No kizzy. Me and this nigga might be fucking related. Like, it's fucking... It, it really is like a... What do you call it? Uh, it really is like uh, it's scary the similarities that we have. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. I don't smoke. I don't drink. He got a hairline, but at his age, I had a hairline too. So relax. We got the same head, bro. Got the same head. <laughs> same beard. I just grew the mustache. I didn't have a mustache before. He barely got a mustache. It looked like it's you know what I'm saying. I don't know if that's purposely or what. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, rap styles are, you know, kind of similar. He, he, I never, see, everybody, when he first came out, everybody was tagging him, tagging him, tagging him. It's overrolling, it's overrolling, overrolling. Look at this, look at this nigga, look at this nigga. And I was looking at, like, I mean, that's not my rap style. Like, he got, like, a, um, mm, what do you call it? Like, he has, like, a, freestyling witty bar type of style I think that I have a conceptual rap style like nigga like uh, Trap Spangled Banner for instance like that's my real life you know what I'm saying and Trap Spangled Banner is like this is the like you know the Star Spangled Banner that the United States every before every baseball game we take off our hat and we take a knee like Cap Kaepernick and shit like that Star Spangled Banner. It was, oh, hell. Dude. I don't know the fucking Star Spangled Banner. Who knows? Who knows that shit? That shit ain't in the hood. But Trap Spangled Banner, that's what I was doing with that. You know what I'm saying? It was a concept. And then I was given the concept of like, like this is what we idolize. This is what we take our hats off to. Niggas who are raised and niggas who have gone through struggles like this. That was the purpose of the record. But it's a concept is my point. I don't, like Pac-Man hasn't put out a project yet. Um... He's been running up singles, going crazy with the singles. But that's how his singles are. Like her sing his singles are like witty, barred, freestyling type of content. It's not like he put out a record that I mean, well, I can't say that. I don't know his business. I can't say that he hasn't put out a I was gonna say he, he hasn't put out a record that means something to him. I can't say that. But I can say that he hasn't purposely put out a record that's like Mine's a little different. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking him at all. You know what I'm saying? More power, more money, more respect to the brother. But I'm just watching his interviews, and I was like, damn. I get it now. I get why people say we the same. Because niggas say we got the same personality. Like, if y'all, I mean, y'all clearly see from my fucking podcast. You know what I'm saying? I'm very talkative. I'm very, like, charismatic. I'm very uh, animated, dr dramatic. All these, all, all of the above. You know what I'm saying? So, shit. I was watching this shit, and I was like, it, like it's, it's scary. And, you know, I'm adopted. So that's the other part, too. I don't even know who, like, my real parents are and shit. So, you know, it was just, it was just and, you know, it's just, hey, man, it's just a lot of crazy similarities, man. How, like, we really have, the, like, the same taste in things, the same style of jokes. The way we explain ourselves is very similar. Our mannerisms, you know what I'm saying? And our characteristics, you know what I'm saying, too, like, you know. I just more have I have more of a football built body. He's just more like a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 
She in SpongeBob? He's like, that's SpongeBob. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> he about to say some jokes with me. I know. No, man, actually, I, I, I talked to uh, Pat Man before, man. We talked, you know, online and shit. You know what I'm saying? He expressed it, you know. I expressed to him, man, you know, and I fuck with dogs. So, but I, but my point was, we, we, we already, you know what I'm saying? But I just never knew the similarity. I never, I seriously, I seriously was blinded to like, why do y'all think he's like me? Why do y'all think I'm like him? I don't get it. I was on live yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Talking shit about my haircut, saying how fresh I am. You know what I'm saying? Hope y'all put your baby mamas up. And uh, a nigga jumped on my mind. Pac-Man took your spot. You over. Well, I'm like, damn. Like, <laughs> and I see this one interview, this nigga uh, Carlos has said. And he was like, yeah, man, there's not a lot of unity with the fat niggas. And, <laughs> and it's like, there's been more fat women and more women in hip-hop than ever right now. I was like, man, that's a crazy fucking comparison and a very hilarious joke. Well, yeah, shout out to BLB Pac-Man, man. Might be my fucking twin. Hey, man, we twins. It is what it is. I got you by like, I think, eight or six or eight years, but besides that, we're twins. Maybe 10 years, shit. I don't know. You know, I'm older, but hey, it is what it is. We're twins, nigga, so accept it. It is what it is, nigga. Tell my mom, say, what up? I'll be home for Thanksgiving. Um, Memorial Day weekend, man. What I got up, man? I ain't got shit up. It's so much to talk about. You know, I'm not going to go over an hour, man. I just, you know, I'm not trying to fucking flood y'all with all my bullshit, but uh, so much shit going on, man, in the world. Memorial Day weekend, man. It's just time to just sit back and relax. I'm about to go see the kids. Probably barbecue for them or something, man. And just, you know, I'm ch I'm on chili mode today, man. Um, oh, man. Uh, RIP them kids, man, that's through in that school shooting, too. Speaking of my kids, man, I was, you know, I I, I don't even know, man. I can't even imagine. I can't, I can't even speak on it. I, don't, I can't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of fucking fucked up people out here like that. And we call them sick. And we call them, we give them all the excuses in the world of why they are a certain way. And it's just like, bro, at the end of the day, bro, they were wrong and whatever, bro. Like, you know, but just, you know, I just got to pray for mine because I couldn't even imagine waking up hearing that little mama at school got shot up. And what the fuck? Like, I, I mean, in my mind, I'm just thinking in my mind, like, man, that's like World War Three for me. Like, nigga, I want to know. Everything, just as I want to know everything. I mean, I just, I, I don't know what I'm getting that. All type of vengeance is what I'd be seeking. You know what I'm saying? How did this nigga get this? How did, who's his parents? Who, everybody got to, we torching everything. <laughs> I mean, you know, and even for my homies. Like, if my homie called me and said, man, they just did this to my kid. Oh, yeah, come on. Nigga, I don't just ride for mine. I ride for the babies, period. Nigga, like, fuck all that shit. That shit fucked up. That's the world we living in, though, man. Bizarre, oh, I, I went to my nigga Bizarre. He had a listening party. He got a project coming out. We're going to talk about new music. My nigga Bizarre, he got a song, uh, not a song, he got a project called He Got a Gun. And, uh, you know, to pop it off with Bizarre, was a listening party. And, man, I feel like Bizarre, at the point of the career that he's in right now, has found another pocket and found another space. And I think this space in his pocket, excuse me, that he's, that he's in right now is going to work for him. I think it's going to work for him, and I think that he's going to really fucking um, thrive in this lane that he's doing now. He's still talking some crazy shit, but he's he's on some other shit now. Like, he's, you know what I'm saying? I just, I wish the best for that nigga, man. Bizarre is one of my very good friends, dog, from D12. Not only did I admire him growing up, but I mean, it's just, the fact that we friends now, man, it's a privilege, man. That's my nigga. So, Bizarre, congratulations. He got a gun June 3rd. You know what I'm saying? It's on. Um, who else got? We got a bunch of new music, man. I've been dropping new music, nigga. You been peeping my shit out? Just a reminder. Come on, man. Every fucking every every month since March, every month since February. A cousin from Southfield, my cousin from Southfield, put out a project. I helped him put it together. That shit's amazing. It's different and it's amazing. Y'all gotta trust him when I say that. A cousin from Southfield, he dropped this project. Um. Blue Jays, it's called Blue Jays, because he was a Southfield Blue Jay. If you put a comparison together, it's an amazing, it's an amazing, and it's just, he's like held up like he's a bird. It's, he's about, he's, like, he's soaring, like it's it's crazy. His project is crazy, man. Y'all gotta go check that shit out. I gotta go listen to that shit today because I missed that project. Um, so I was in February, March. Just a reminder, just to let you bitch ass niggas know, man. I rap like I know I'm making records for myself, records that I like to get groovy to and get G with. But bitch ass nigga, I rap. Like I can really rap. Like if I like if I really wanted to go in the battle rap world, I would tear niggas the fuck 
up. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I just don't, my memory is shot. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that's not my lane. You know what I mean? If I had a memory, I'd be on Sway 45 every fucking day. LA Beakers, all these freestyles and shit you niggas be seeing, I'd be tearing shit up. But my memory is just, you know what I mean? It is what it is, bro. You know, I'm going to forget bars. I'm, it ain't nothing about conscious, about, about uh, 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 being uh, uh, nervous and no shit like that. Like, nigga, I think I'm that nigga. <laughs> if you ask me, my friends, confident. Confidence problems? No, that's not his issue. His issue, he, he, he checks off there, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. Um, What else? Uh, oh, yeah, then I, nigga, I dropped the R&B project. Nigga, what? Shut your bitch ass up right now, nigga. If you was talking right now, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. I dropped the motherfucking R&B pro project, nigga. You know what I'm saying? R&P, nigga. Rhythm and player, nigga. Fuck is you talking about, nigga? Yeah, nigga, I dropped the whole fucking project R&B. You know what I'm saying? I need my bitch back. I dropped it uh, two days after, three days after Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. I can't believe that shit happened. I mean, that's just some other shit. Jesus Christ. Don't have these hoes out here, man, slapping niggas, bro. Slapping comedians, bro. You got to get a hold of yourself. Will Smith, that's my nigga for life. I don't give a fuck what he does, okay? As long as he ain't no pedo, you know what I'm saying? As long as he don't hit, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, hey, nigga, he fucking... He's not Chris Rock. Chris Rock, that's my man for life. One of the top, I, you know, this argument about Chris Rock not being one of the top funniest comedians in, in the in the world. You niggas are fucking idiots. You don't know shit and you don't know comedy history. Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. There's some more that I'm not. I'm like missing huge ones. I'm missing. Um, some more. Um, I'm gonna give them for Nikki too. What's her name? Uh, 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 I don't know. I can't. That's fucked up. I can't even think of her real name right now. Miss Parker. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, big baby. They lost all that weight. She's still a professional. She's still that nigga. You know the funny part about comedians? I've been hearing that Cat Williams is the funniest man on fucking planet Earth. If you go to one of his like stand-ups where he just like pops up and does comedy and freestyle shit, or if you fucking Catch one of his shows is not like being aired for Netflix or some shit like that. He's the funniest man on fucking earth. I heard. I heard that. I don't know. I haven't seen it. You know? Oh, I'm over here yarning, man. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here, man, before I go to sleep on y'all niggas. I fell asleep on the first step. I, I, I tried to record this shit last night and fell asleep on the camera, like. And woke up like, oh, shit. I got some shit. Fuck y'all. Anyways, look. More music bands come out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. PSL, PSL, PSL. Y'all niggas know what time it is. You know, I got an artist. She's a female. Her name is Vixen. My Vixen. Hey, man. Vix is... Man, listen. She, I, I told y'all niggas, before the hiatus, get ready for Vix. We just now getting things prepared and ready to launch her the right way. And uh, it's too late now, hoes. <laughs> you hoes just got to be, you know, second place. It just is what it is. You know I'm only fucking with the best of the best quality. So, you know, my girl Vix, she just dropped her first single, Thundering. Yeah. Thundering, right now, produced by Cold Cash Collection. And hey, man, it is what it is, bro. Like, nigga, it's a wrap. You, you know, you guys, you guys, we, we, we giving you guys enough time to catch up, to figure something out, to orchestrate something, put a situation together. We've given you guys enough time. Time's up. By Vixen is out right now. Thundering, out right now. You know what I'm saying? Video coming probably next week. You know what I'm saying? And it's time to shake the world up a little bit. You feel me? She the baddest motherfucker in it, man. I'm telling y'all. Watch. Watch this girl. I told y'all me and San Antonio, we, we dropped new shit. Ben Platinum, his project. Um, he got his little brother D-Lo on there and shit. And uh, yeah, man. It's on. Ben Platinum, man. Um, What else? Oh, Babyface Ray. He dropped uh, some new shit. Shout out to Face. You know what I'm saying? My nigga on tour. Or my DJ, DJ Limelights, you know, they doing, they, 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 hey, man, hey, hey, they changing face, they changing face of the culture, you know what I'm saying, go ahead, face, you can use that, <laughs> nah, man, they, but you know, they, hey, hey, man, shit, you know, um, he put out the Lux part, uh, part. I didn't even know that he, I thought he already put out the Lux, they even dropping some of his music and shit, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, damn, I thought he already dropped the Lux, but yeah, he dropped another Deluxe, that congratulations on that Deluxe is crazy, uh -huh. I think that's what Lil Yachty I think is on there. 
That's just crazy. Um, I'm still, man, I'm a lot of you, bro. Face, I'm still listening to fucking you and V's. Shout out to my nigga V's, man. That little nigga, man. I'm still listening to you and V's uh, gallery department. God damn. I hate you niggas for making that record. How dare, listen, man, how dare you niggas make a record like that and not call me, man? Shut up, man. Shut up. Every time that bitch come on, I don't even be, I be just freestyling. I can't even, I just get, I, I, I be trying to listen to y'all shit. Y'all shit fire. I, I, I just get, to, I gotta be with y'all niggas. Come on, I'm in the crew. Most game, we in this bitch now. Whatever though, man. Shout out to Face, my nigga Face. They doing their thing. Uh, so far for me, man, I'm gonna be honest with you. My nigga Future probably dropped my one of my favorite albums of the year so far. Um, I never liked you. That I'm that nigga. I can't stop riding that shit. Like it's just the bounce of it, man. It's just it's it's my type of style. Like it's my type of style of listening to music. You know what I'm saying? Um, besides the same beats that Ray got on his shit. You know, it's just a, it's a style of shit that I like to listen to. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Future drops some new shit. Oh, I've been peeping out new artists, too. This thing ain't Dave Hill. I'm telling you now. I'm going to be the first thing to tell you. Dave Hill, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know how he's going to do it. Okay? Him and Lou Hefner, them niggas are going to change this shit. The fuck? They gonna, they're going to twist this bitch around. I'm telling you now. Okay, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know none of that shit. You know what I'm saying I'm not predicting time periods. I'm predicting pop the, the possibility. You know what I'm saying of what these niggas have in store. You feel me? And um, yeah, them niggas about to drop some shit, bro. Uh, Dave Hill, he dropped the project called Untitled. Go check that shit out. Um, also, this nigga named Ben Swanson. <sighs> this nigga. Hey, cuz I never, I, look, I don't know, dude. I, none of that shit matters. All that matters is that the product he put out right now is fucking crazy. Uh, Still Wild But Wonderful is the name of his project. And um, he got this Nemo song on there, Closer To My Fiends. Man, he got some records on that bitch, bro. That nigga's dancing on that bitch, bro. And uh, yeah, I fuck with that nigga. Ben Swanson nigga, Dave Hill. Yeah. Go check out them projects. We got more shit, uh, Big Foe. You know my nigga, you know my nigga Foe Peasy, man. Come on, man. Uh, 4822 Foe. <laughs> 4822 F-O-E Foe. You know what I'm saying? That's just fire. Um, uh, he's a superstar. He's like, he's like a rock star. You know what I'm saying? He's like, him Him and Shot Killer are like the same lane for me. They're like, they, they, they rap stars, but they rock stars. They rock stars for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Taylor Bentley. You know what I'm saying? Blue, she been she been dropping some shit. She's yeah, she's coming. Um very excited to see more stuff from her. Her performances, she's been killing performances. She's going that lane, that route. I love it. Um Oh, my, my brother Cino. Come on, man. Finkel Lab, man. Come on. What up, fives? You know, West Side Fives. Yeah, man. Um the 4 one guy himself. Nigga, uh, he dropped the just a kid from Finkel. Produced by Drake Butters mo mo mostly, and man, him and Drake, man, they got some songs in there, bro. I'm like, bro, like, no, no, no bullshit. Like, I, I'm not saying this shit for the camera. I went to his listening party and I listened to a few songs. I was in there, you know, by myself, and I was just in the corner. Just, I like to go to listening parties and really vibe out and see where niggas' head is at, where niggas' space is at. You know what I'm saying? Most niggas go to like kick it and converse with different people and shit, politics with niggas, take pictures and shit, you know. But I really like to go and listen to music and see where niggas' space, head space is at. See where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Where's my head space at? Are, are, are we relatable? You know? And um, he had a song on there, man, that, that brought a tear to my eye, bro. Like, no, I'm not saying, like, like it was it was a small tear. Relax. It wasn't, you know, booming. But it was like a little tear that came down. I was like, oh, shit. And he said a line about Capo. And I was like, yeah, man, I just, I'm glad he... Couple's a uh, partner of ours that uh, that passed, and uh, I'm glad. He, I'm glad. I'm just glad, you know. I'm just, I, uh, I really appreciate that record, man. And uh, Drake Butters is a fucking genius. It is what it is. Um, who else been dropping shit? Payroll dropped back to the basics. Speaking of four one, Payroll dropped back to the basics. Um, Payroll man, his rapping ability is like just his consistent rapping ability in in the pocket that he's in. It's just fucking very impressive. Um, yeah, man, he just, you know, it's payroll. What can you say, man? It's pay. 
You know what I'm saying? Pay him, nigga. <laughs> Pay up. <laughs> nah, nigga. Uh, T. Grizzly dropped some shit. You know, the other nigga that's, you know, just like me. Me when I had dreads. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I'm, I should post a fucking picture of me at 21. And y'all niggas be like, that nigga T. Grizzly. What the fuck is going on? It's, just, it's scary, right? It is, man. It's like, you know, shout out to T, man. He dropped a uh, half T, half beast. Um, I didn't get all the way through it. I was doing some shit, but I played, uh, I think it was like track number six or seven, something like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? T up there rapping the way he, you know, it's T, man. And then he got crazy bars. Um, crazy, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like Nas, like, uh, him and Peasy. T and Peasy got Nas, like, storytelling them. Ability visions, like visuals, like story, how to bring a story to life. Yeah, they got that shit down packed. You know what I'm saying? I can do that shit too. <laughs> that you big niggas know. I can do it too. But nah, I'm just talking. <laughs> nah, they got that shit down packed, man. They really got some shit going on. Um, the Ohio homie Chip the Ripper dropped bonfires. That shit was like just fresh, refreshing, man. Like, you know, Chip is always going to be on some other shit. Like, he ain't following what niggas doing. He's always going to walk his own path. And he masters that shit. He like executes that shit perfect. Um, oh my my my, my baby Skiller baby, come on, Skiller baby, baby, yeah, that's my nigga, man. I ain't gonna lie, this project it wasn't what I expected. Um, this project was more like soulful, you know what I'm saying? But he got some. He got like three records on there that I'm like, oh my god, you know. I've never heard. I'm be honest with you, man. This is two people, Sasha Bass. Samuel Samuel Shabazz and Skiller Baby, I've never heard them drop a, a weak project. I, or not a weak project. I've never heard them do a wax song. I've never heard a wax song from niggas. So, you know, uh, yeah, Skiller Baby got Detroit Raised Me. That cover artwork is fire. I love to see Skiller shining, man, because he deserves it. He's going to be a big name in the game. You will see. I don't care if, if it takes him to get to 30. You know, I don't give a fuck. He's going to be a big fucking deal when he gets in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm trying to think. Last but not least, uh, Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar, the big boom. The the, 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 the Mount Rushmore of hip-hop. I seen those Mount Rushmore pictures of hip-hop, and y'all was putting my brother Big Sean in there too, by the way. Which has to happen, by the way. Just letting you know, it has to happen. Come on, bro. But, you know, <laughs> You know, hey, you know, we we're humble guys. We're humble gangsters over here. You know, very humble gangsters. We know what we did, niggas. Who we did it to know that we did it. <laughs> and we walk, you know, we walk in peace and we walk in, you know, prosperity. You know, but um, yeah, uh, Kendrick Lamar just dropped. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. <sighs> uh, I play the fence on this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kendrick Lamar is a phenomenal artist. Um, if you aren't a fan of hip hop, you just won't understand that. If you if you just like gangster rap and you just like your one genre and your one, you won't understand who Kendrick Lamar is. Kendrick Lamar is a special human being when it comes to creation. You know what I'm saying? I believe, and intention and character. I believe. You know, I met the brother once. Uh, I won't speak on anything else about it, but I met the brother once and we had a very good conversation. And we just it was a very good time. You know what I'm saying? And um, Kendrick Lamar, this project didn't do it for me, though. I'm not going to lie to you. This project didn't do it for me. Um, I felt like, well, I've I seen an interview and somebody said these are all old songs. A lot of them are old records. But I just was like, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't hear old this in it. I just said it didn't do it for me because I'm not a big fan of the Boom Pap like beats. I've never been a fan of the Boom Paps. You know what I'm saying? Like, my favorite Kendrick album is Damn. Because it's the most melodic. It's the most. And next is uh, Good Kid, Mad City. And I'm pretty sure that, like, people's. And then it's Section 80. So I'm pretty sure that people's, like, you know, opinions on what they favor from Kendrick is uh, pretty similar. Because it's what the popular vote is. But I do think this is a. I do think this is an important project. I think that it's a good project. I do think that. I think it's a phenomenal project. He's a phenomenal artist, but it's not the project for me. Like, I will fucking go back to a hundred times. You know what I'm saying? But he he got some vibes on here though for sure. I said this. This is my quote. I don't know if anybody said this yet, but Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is to pimp a butterfly 
with better beats. I said that. Yeah. And a lot of people agree with me, whatever, but everybody got their own opinion on that shit. Overall, man, this like, you know, whenever you do what Kendrick's doing, man, you you I mean you I just feel like as a as a fellow artist, as a fellow person who likes to create, you know, and I have my my hiccups and things and when I create things too, but the overall message is that nigga, um, I'm giving you a piece of me and uh I'm bringing you into a world that I'm in and sharing this world with you. And that alone, especially in today's society, is appreciated for me and respected. So therefore, this project, uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, it is a good project. It's not the project for me all the way. The visuals, the visuals, are, you know what I mean? I mean, all his visuals are kind of crazy. I mean, he kind of matches that line. But yeah, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Morale and Big Steppers, man. I shout out, shout out to the nigga Kendrick, man, uh, in the whole West Coast. It's a good project, you know? Sean, we waiting for you. Let's go. I I know I know a few things that you got going on. I've been talking to Key Wayne. Yeah, nigga. We've been talking. Me and Key is in touch again. You know what I'm saying? We've been, you know what I'm saying? Putting some, you know, just probably taking some ideas and thought processes together. Sean, what's up? We waiting on you. Let's go. Let's go, brother. You, you know, I, look, I told Sean, I'm going to tell you what I told you. He didn't want me to tell you this. I told him, I said, whenever these niggas say go get them, we can go get them. I want you to know, I don't give a fuck where we at, nigga. We in this bitch, nigga. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm that friend. <laughs> I'm that friend. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the guy in the red suit on your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? What you want to do, nigga? We can go get them if you want to go get them. All right. All right. I, I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. I'm a chill. It ain't my life. I'm a, I'm a chill. You're right. You're right. I got to be respectful. Got to respect the gods. <laughs> I told you, man. Like, I really am. I'm like Detroit Fat Joe to an extent. Relax. Not that much. Not that much. I wasn't that going out here like that. Fat Joe's his own. But, I mean, mind, mentally, mindset-wise, conceptual, nigga, who won it? Nigga. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm Fat Joe, Detroit Fat Joe for sure. From that concept uh, perspective, but yeah, man, uh, I I just tried to fit as much as I could. Past six months into an hour, I think I did a pretty phenomenal job. Um, I'm sure it's a lot of shit I missed. Um, what else can I say, man? Hey, if you're my friends, man, fuck you. Uh, if you're my ops, man, fuck you too. <laughs> I don't want you guys to get it. Ops, I treat you just like my friends too. Fuck all y'all. I don't like nobody. How about that? Over on the God's favorite podcast, man, episode eight. You know what time it is, man. Uh, what else? PSL, the biggest brand on land. Stop fucking playing with us, man. It's coming. I'm dropping a new project probably next month, too, and a new single. Hopefully, I get this video done. Oh, go go listen, go stream that fucking Hot 175 video, bitch. I'm over 100,000 now. Bitch, I'm up 100K. What's up? What you gonna say to me now? Shout out to my nigga Sada. What you gonna say to me? I ain't even dancing. I could have tore Sada ass up. Y'all seen the video with the jacket? I told you the jackets was stricken me. I think some of them put some shit in the water and planned that. I, I think they went to the fucking polo store I went to and they planned the jacket. They planned the jacket right there and said, he goes, his fat ass gonna walk past this aisle because it's the big and tall section. You know they got a big man section of polo. This is the big and tall section and he gonna walk past the aisle and he gonna see this jacket and he gonna be like, ooh, that's dope. And he gonna put it on and be like, damn, I can't get it. But damn, I can make it work. But damn, I should. And he gonna roll with it. And I did. That motherfucker got me. He caught me slipping. He did. And I could, I was in that bitch like, I couldn't fucking move. I'm like, okay. Okay. I see what you did. Now, if I took that bitch off, and I had the Ethica shirt on. Now, you know, Ethica, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them boys, but then you know Ethica make the baby shirts. You know, they, you know they make the baby tees. So I'd have been a motherfucking better dancer in that bitch with the Ethica shit on. So I was just like, man, you know what, bro? Sada, you can have this video. You got this one. You went up on me, all right? He had the vest and the white tee on, going crazy with the jewelry on. You know what I'm saying? He had the motherfucking combat boots on. You know what I'm saying? He was ready for war. I couldn't fuck with that nigga for that shit. So, yeah, he outdanced me on that one. Whatever, 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 nigga. I ain't fucking tripping. But you niggas know what time it is for me, man. Stop playing. I'm the one. The one and the only one. Now that that's it, man. Like I said, God's favorite podcast, episode eight. Yeah, man. That's it. That's all I got. Fuck y'all. Can I turn this shit off right?